special episode today. All right, let's get everything nice and cleaned up. Ready for a little bit of food preparation today. I got a different episode for y'all. So we're, here's what we're gonna attempt today. I bought some sausage seasoning. I bought two Boston butts, boneless Boston butts, and we're gonna attempt to grind up and make our own sausage. Here's the reason why. Almost every single morning, we'll take a couple of our eggs from our chickens, we'll take a piece of sausage, we'll cook it up, and maybe put a piece of cheese on it, and that's kind of our breakfast. So the problem I'm having with store-bought sausage right now, one, it's extremely expensive. And we're just talking patties here. I've got venison smoke link sausage whenever I decide that I want to grill some. So patties at the store right now are running $5 a pound, little under for the cheapest I can find. That's like the Walmart patties, all right? You get up into the Jimmy Dean sausage patties and some other brands, eight something, $9 per pound is what you're paying. Holy smokes, that is outrageous. And here's the other issue that I'm having with that sausage, an unreal amount of fat. A lot of people don't realize your typical sausage can be 50% fat. You see how greasy your pan is when you're done? I just don't care for that. And the other huge thing that I cannot stand with store-bought sausage, it is unbelievably salty. So much salt that I just can't stand it. So I've picked up some local seasoning here. We find this at all of our local IGAs. It's made by Legs, L-E-G-G. Yes, this company makes excellent seasonings and they're super, super cheap. So when you add it all up, I just paid $2.99 a pound for these Boston butts because I'm trying to try this. I couldn't catch them on sale, but I typically find these for $1.89 to $1.99 a pound. The seasonings is very hard to even add into the price of this at $2 when you're talking making 15 to 25 pounds. But long story short, when I catch this on sale, I can make my sausage in-house for a little over $2 a pound. I'm gonna to try to save all the fat that I can, but anything that's hard, doesn't look good, has bad color, it's going straight in the trash can, but we wanna save all the fat that we can because we're gonna grind this up. And we're gonna grind a couple times to make sure we mix that fat content really well into this sausage. So let's face it, we're just gonna have to get our hands dirty with this. I thought for that price they were boneless, so we're gonna to have to trim around the bone. That's my fault. But I suggest, boneless for doing this, there's a little odd coloration on that piece of fat. I don't want nothing to do with it. And I made sure I picked ones in the package that had nice soft fat on them. Some of them will be so thick, they're hard. That's not what I want. So my plan here is just to cut down into this, start cutting out big chunks that will fit in this gigantic grinder that I have. So look at this, we're still getting tons of fat that'll be in our sausage. There's so much fat throughout the meat here. There's gonna be no problem with this frying up like your typical fatty sausage. I've got me a new pretty robust grinder. Y'all have seen it whenever I've been processing deer and other things on the channel. So I can leave these chunks relatively large, unlike some of the grinders that I've had in the past. That right there will work great. So this should be a quick process overall. And any blood that I see, any bloodshot little meat or fat, it's coming out. It's not necessarily the flavor that we're looking for here. So typically at your big grocery stores, when they make in-house sausage, and I tried some recently, was not impressed, you're gonna get all the fat trimmings off of when they're trimming up butts and pork loins and things like that. And the majority of what was in the local sausage that I just recently bought was just horrible trimmings, nasty fat, and the seasoning was not good. All right, so here is all my meat cut up in this big container. It's right at 15 pounds of meat. If you're gonna be adding cure and doing smoked sausage, things like that, you really wanna get your scale out. Make for sure you go buy your seasoning packet, salt cure, all that good stuff. This is just a straight seasoning, no cure added. We're gonna be cooking the meat to temp after the fat. So let's go over a couple precautions really quick and then I need to jump into this because I don't like my meat sitting out. That's precaution number one. Work in a cool room. I've got an AC going in here. I have big freezers and refrigerators behind you. A nice clean space. And after you're done cutting up your meat, I just bleached and cleaned everything down to get ready for the next step. Straight into a refrigerator. You don't want this meat getting hot. So I'm in and out of a refrigerator throughout this entire process right here, trying to keep my meat nice and cool. Keep all your surfaces nice and sanitary. Everything nice and washed out. Some of you may even want to use gloves when handling raw meat. Not a bad practice. So I'm about to take this big tub of meat, put it right down in the sink that I just bleached out. And this particular grinder right here has a huge top plate. So I can go ahead and put 
10 plus pounds of meat up here really easy. I could probably put all of it up here and just feed straight in. I'm about to pile it up here. By the way, if you're curious about any of the equipment that you see me use out here in this processing room, I always put links down in the description. This is a commercial grinder that I just got from a company named Vivor. They sponsor the channel. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I've already did a review on this. Just letting y'all know because people always ask about our equipment. I just went from one of those little tiny LEM plastic gear driven grinders, which I've had forever, to this. It's comical how much stronger and more powerful this is. Just feed this stuff down into it. It's going to spit it out. Now I'm starting with my coarse grind plate right here. So we're going to grind the meat coarse, season it up, and then we're going to re-grind this on a fine plate later. We definitely want to double grind and mix this well, especially anytime you're adding seasoning to this much meat. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with pockets of seasoning. Things just aren't going to turn out right. And we need to incorporate that fat really well. All right, looks like I'll probably get all 15 pounds of meat up here. I love, love, love having a larger grinder. We grind all of our own deer and everything else we can get our hands on all throughout the fall. So we'll throw it in. Let's get to grinding away. This particular grinder will take meat just as quick as I can drop it down into the tube. So this packet of seasoning says it covers 25 pounds of meat. We've got 15 pounds, so I'm going to measure it out. And we'll do about, well, two-thirds to three-quarters of the bag. That's the cool thing about doing your own sausage at home. You can play with your seasonings. You can put more, you can put less. All right, so we're showing right at 12 ounces in here. So we'll put roughly around eight ounces in the meat. And here's the cool thing about it. Always bring you a little test pan and you can test your meat. Fry you a piece up real quick, try it out. It won't be quite the same as sitting overnight and really infusing the flavors, but it'll give you a rough idea where you're at on your seasoning. So have something aside real quick, fry it up and adjust your seasonings to taste. All right, so there is our coarse ground meat. That took absolutely no time with this grinder. That would have taken forever with my old little one and it wouldn't have handled pieces anywhere near that big. I had to spend a lot more time cutting up and preparing too. But as you can see, that's just way too coarse. And we'll look, you got big chunks of meat and then you see a lot of fat in other places so it's not mixed together well. So we'll go ahead and start putting our seasonings in little by little. And now we're just mixing. I wish I had a big mixer to do all this, but I do not. So now, let's just start incorporating this. Let's fold the meat over, that's very important. Push it in, but folding will get to the bottom and that new meat exposed. And we'll just layer in some more of this. It's a, it's a messy job. Somebody's gotta do it. If you start finding ground meat and fat sticking to your hands like this, you can wet your hands and it won't stick quite as bad. All right, looks like the right amount for this much meat. And we're gonna mix for quite a while. I'll flip my pan around like you just seen, start folding from the other way. That's why I really like these style pans. A big stainless bowl works good too, but these high-sided pans allow you to really flip, fold that meat from all different directions. All right, I'm gonna stick this into the refrigerator we're going to fry up a piece and test this because we can always add more seasoning. All right, I got me a little hot plate going. Let's make us up a tiny little patty right here. One that's got what appears to be the right amount of fat. Get something nice and thin to cook quick. We're going to let that fry up. All right, the room smells delicious now. We've had this going for a little bit. I just checked the temp. We want to cook pork to at least 155 internal. We're already flying past that. We're in the 160s. Here's the other thing, y'all. Look in the pan. Other than that little bit of burnt bits, what do you not see? Grease everywhere. You'll see a little bit of fat down there, but not like that store-bought stuff. This is also a good time to add any spices that you may want, like some red pepper flakes or cayenne pepper, anything that you want to kick it up if you like your stuff spicy. And as always, if you get a mixture that you like, 
write down in your book, put a notepad in your phone, 15 pounds of meat, and I used eight ounces of so-and-so seasoning, or I had to add two ounces more, jot that down so you remember it for next time. It'll make your process so much quicker and easier. All right, this is still piping hot. It's getting late in the day. I want to go ahead and mix this up. Everything looks nice and cooked. I can smell the seasonings. Oh, I like that. Sorry to eat in front of y'all. I was thinking I was going to add even more because I couldn't hardly smell it once it was mixed in the meat. That is perfect. That is exactly the taste I think of when I think of breakfast sausage. And I don't want to go any saltier than that either, but the flavor is awesome. What you think, buddy? You approve? Oh, he's wagging his tail. I think we're good. He's been over asleep in the corner. All right, so now we're going to move over to the fine plate. Much smaller holes, about half the size. That's going to be perfect for finishing this sausage off. We're going to regrind everything. That'll get it nice and incorporated and mixed together really well and get the texture right where we need it for the finished product. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna have really good taste in sausage. I controlled the quality of the meat and for a fraction of the cost of what it runs at the store. All right, let's get all this beautiful ground sausage up here. All right, we're definitely gonna want our plunger for this right here, our meat pusher. Let's kick it on. Let's just start pushing it down the hole. It's going to be a little bit slower process right here. All right, so typically what I do is I take the meat out that we've now double ground. Let me show you that, by the way. It just looks so much more like your store-bought meat. So normally what I do is I take that out, put in this little burger press that we got from the dollar store of all places, press down and make me a little burger, and then I'll put it over on some parchment paper. But I just got to thinking, why on earth would I go through all that extra work of making all these individual patties when I could potentially do this idea that just popped in my head? And I'm not the first person to ever think of this. So I got to thinking, you know the little Wendy's square burgers? Well, I could make that with these really quick and easy. Put me a wad of meat in here, spread it thin, and then I can go ahead and pre-cut it into little squares. It doesn't matter if it's round or square. Rounds a little better, but this should be a whole lot easier. And I'm all about, let's make this easy. All right, so let's try this theory out. Go ahead and get a wad of meat. Put it out here in the center of the pan. Start pressing thin on this parchment paper. All right, so now I'll just cut down into this. This will help me break it up after this freezes, which is our next step. So now I can take this paper out with all those cube sausage patties. Grab another piece of parchment paper and repeat the process. Now here's the cool thing about doing this. Just lay this one right on top of the other one. Nice clean pan. They don't freeze together bad. They do freeze together a little, but no paper pulls off. You can pop these off, you can smack them, and they pop right out. All right, and just like that, 120 little probably three by three square breakfast patties. That's a lot of patties, y'all. So into the deep freezer they go. All right, so moment of truth. Here we are next day. Believe it or not, these are not actually fully frozen, even though my freezer is down around zero degrees, but they're getting there. We pulled two off this morning and we made some breakfast sandwiches with it or breakfast low carb wraps, whatever you want to call it. My wife thought they were excellent, and she's the pickier one when it comes to sausage. I think it tastes just like store-bought sausage, so I'm loving this seasoning. I think it's gonna be a good time to break these apart real quick while they're not completely frozen, although they're getting there. The ones I peeled out this morning come out very easy. I wait till these are rock hard, you know, a couple days in the freezer. It may be a little harder to separate them, although, well, I don't know, that's peeling them apart pretty good. So I may have just accidentally discovered a good technique. So, Peels up nice and easy. I think I can just peel these right off. So I just made thin, well, like patties, just like you see the little square burgers at Wendy's. These cooked up really quick and easy this morning, even though they were partially frozen. 
Wow, all right, this is working out absolutely perfect. This is how I'm gonna do it from here on out. No point in using the uh, little patty and burger press. It just takes too long. Put them on a sheet just like this. Man, wonderful. Well, I gotta clean myself up, but hopefully you enjoyed this. Yes, you have the initial cost of a grinder. I always recommend people learn how to process your own food at home. You're just gonna get a better quality food, and if you could start growing and harvesting your food at home, that's just the next step to take it to. We may eventually start raising our own pork here on the homestead in the future. We already have plans for cows, goats, and other things. We already have our chickens, we already grow our garden. So this is just part of learning and figuring some things out. But even with going to the store and buying the meat, now I control what meat goes in my sausage, good quality, well, Boston butts. I can look at them right there in the store. I'm controlling the fat content. I'm controlling the seasoning. I'm cutting out any bad pieces up here. I'm covering the cleanliness environment my food's prepared in. I just like everything about this process. Other than, yeah, you've got to invest a little bit of time into it, but it's totally worth it. All right, thank y'all so much for watching. If I can find links to the seasoning, and I'll put a link to the grinder down in the description. That thing's a beast. Go check it out. We'll catch you on the next video.